Shalom everyone, this is Malaya from Jerusalem and I have some updates for you and a special message. The first thing I want to do is offer my heartfelt apologies to everyone um, that participated and waited so patiently for the interview with Prince Asiel in Israel. Uh, I want you all to know I tried everything humanly possible to get that interview to you. It was my sixth attempt to do so. And uh, the last attempt the other evening, we did actually do or hold the interview, but the interview was mysteriously not recorded. So um, I have to just apologize to everyone involved, especially to the Prince for all of his time and patience. Um, it was one of those things that just are totally unexplainable and I'm putting it to rest. Um, and uh, I just have to apologize. That's all I can do and, and say that some things are just not to be. So, um, but what I will do is I'd like to give you some highlights of that interview and uh, just to let you know how it went. The interview itself lasted for over three hours there it was it covered everything from the beginning of the uh the movement from america to liberia onto israel um and the prince's involvement um we went on to talk about uh benami we talked about the uh past not the passing but the trials the two trials that the prince was involved in um the lobbying trial just recently um, we spoke about uh, the current events um, that are taking place in America right now with um, blacks worldwide and, and um, we, we discussed a lot of things, we covered a lot and um, I just want to share with you a few of what I felt was highlights because a lot of the information um, I had to honestly say it wasn't really compelling or new. It was basically a lot of uh, the same things that we've heard before. But uh, again, I, I do appreciate the Prince's time and all of his efforts in, in answering the questions and uh, making himself available. So I would say one of the first things that I would consider a highlight of the evening was when I asked him the question, I said, well, you know, I wrote a book, Israel's Secret Cult, and what do you think of um, the community? Do you consider it a cult? The prince didn't hesitate to say, yes, I do. So I felt that was a, uh, something that I've never heard him say before. I don't think the question has ever been put to him, but um, it was... Uh, it was a, a highlight. The second thing that I would say that I found uh, unexpected was I asked him if he felt as though ben -Ami was God. And he, he stated very clearly, no. And you know, for someone that has been a part of the community for over 30 years and has sat in the audience and heard him say loud and clear that ben -Ami was God, you know, I, I, I wondered about that, but you know, with the passing of time, who knows, you know, because I never thought I would even um, be interviewing the Prince, but uh, we did do it. And um, unfortunately, it just wasn't able to be viewed by everyone. Um, the participants, you know, uh, were very, very uh, vocal. Um, the ones that were able to uh, find the interview and everything, they, they were vocal, they expressed themselves. And overall, I think the interview went uh, pretty well. There was a point that I asked the prince if he could lend his support to the cemetery project. You know, that, that uh, desecration of the burial ground is something that I, uh, I found very disturbing. And... Um, once again, he said that he wouldn't hesitate to help us in that area and he would lend his efforts to that. And I'm really looking forward to him keeping his word on that. He made a, a blanket apology for anything that he might have done 
uh, knowingly un unknowingly to hurt anyone to offend anyone you know um, basically he was saying that a, a lot of things he didn't know about you know um, so uh, the only thing we can do is at this point is uh, take him at his word and see um, you know you you never know you can never judge the heart of a man but you can you can observe his actions so basically as he moves on in his growth and his evolution with this movement the hebrew israelite movement we will we will be uh watching and observing to see because you know with leaders and and a leader that was really like this the right hand man to ben -Ami, um I think that it's a, a statesmanly type gesture and a good gesture and a positive gesture to apologize because we haven't heard that from the other leaders in the community that still remain in Demona. However, I do think that a man of his stature could do a little more, you know, for the people considering we did give so much. But now, uh, in all fairness, that doesn't alleviate parents. Um, and uh, the people that lived in that community from their obligation to correct the wrongs that uh, were done and still continue to plague that community. So basically that's it on the interview. Now I just wanted to talk a little bit about leadership in general. Now in my last video I said that um, there were two things that we should expect from our leaders. Not only expect, but demand from our leaders. And those two things are transparency and accountability. Without transparency, without transparency, you can't really see what's happening. You know, we have to have access to the books, so to speak. We have to be able to see what's really going on. You know, um, you know, nowadays with all of the secret lobbying that's going on behind closed doors, we don't really know what's happening. And uh, we have not been demanding transparency from our leaders. Now, the greatest uh, leader of all, the President of the United States, they've demanded uh, an unprecedented amount of transparency from him. And uh, I personally, I don't know how he's even withstood the type of uh, 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 the barrage of uh, inspection and, and, you know, that they have uh, targeted towards him and his family. Not a stone unturned. And uh, we could even go beyond that, but I'm not going to do that in this video. I'm just going to say that um, our leaders in general, you know, we have to have that. And we can't expect um, more than what we're willing to, uh, to give. So... Um, why should they do more than we do? If you know a situation is wrong and you don't even uh, bring it up, you don't report it, you don't demand accountability, you don't demand answers, why should they do more than you do? You know, so um, it, it's, it's a case of um, managing your expectations, you know, and your reality. So uh, now, uh, in terms of leaders, um, the way I look at them is, uh, a friend of mine said recently, he said that they're hope salesmen. They sell hope to the people. You know, hope has its place. We should always have a degree of hope, but we can't just be uh, a nation of people or people in general that just want to hope. We have to take action. We can't just live our lives hoping. I remember being a part of the community for 30 years and ben -Ami said, one day the windows of the heaven are gonna open up and all kind of beautiful blessings are gonna fly out. You know, and we, we slept on that. You know, we kept that in the uppermost portion of our mind. You know, we, we repeated it and we just kept that idea alive in our hearts. You know, one day, one day, one day. And that's the same type of um, uh, afterlife type of uh, mentality that people have today. Well, I may not have it in this life, but in my afterlife, I'll have all my reward. 
No, the powers that be are getting there now, and they're selling you hope. So uh, don't fall for it. You know, as a matter of fact, um, after they've got through selling you the hope, here they come with the the um, the self improvement. Okay, you want to improve society. You want to save the world. You want to correct the wrongs. Okay, so we'll give you another two hundred dollars on your social security check. We're going to improve the roads. We're going to um, improve the educational system. Whatever it is you want to say that's going to improve your uh, your life. Okay. Well, these are just temporary solutions for temporary problems. What is that going to do for people in general, the masses of the people? The people want freedom. The people want the same thing that the, the, uh, the haves want. They want to have um, security. They want to have longevity. They want to be able to enjoy life. But they, uh, they struggle to do that because what they're aiming for are self-improvement. They're aiming for something, you know, of, okay, the potholes in the roads are fixed, but what's that gonna do for my grandchildren? What we need to be striving for, in my opinion, is self-empowerment, not self-improvement. And uh, I, you probably look at a self-improvement as a, oh, uh, well, losing some weight or uh, cutting out some of your bad habits. But the things that the people are focusing on now are not things that are going to help the world. They're not changing the world. They're not focusing on things that are really uh, uh, world issues. What about war? You know, um, couldn't we outrule war? where nobody's killed, where we all come to a round table and discuss things? Couldn't we uh, 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 wipe out starvation? These are things that are possible, but we don't even think in terms of them because we're too busy just trying to survive. We're too busy hoping that maybe next month or next year will be a little bit better. Well, the powers of be have got your whole life and your children and your grandchildren's lives all planned out. So what you want to have, in my opinion, is self-empowerment. Now, the difference between uh, $200 in your Social Security check and being self-empowered is self-empowerment not only helps you, but it helps your whole family, the whole community, and it helps improve the whole world. Now, self-empowerment is what we had, our ancestors had. And it's not something that's so far-fetched, but you believe it's far-fetched because the powers that be have cleverly trained you and educated you or miseducated you into believing that it is totally far-fetched. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the ability to heal yourself. The ability to heal others like Jesus Christ or Yeshua been your been your safe. The ability to transverse time and, and space the ability to uh, walk on water and, and do all of these other uh, supernatural types of things. You know, um, there was a time in history where people were burned as witches just for being able to have a, a small psychic ability. You know, um, but the powers that be have controlled the minds of the people for a centuries and all of the ancient knowledge and wisdom has been taken away so that the natural abilities that you had as co-creators as gods you lost and you don't even think of yourself as a god or a real child of god because to be a child of god means you're a co-creator you have the same powers that your father your mother has but you don't look at it that way you feel you have to beg for those powers. You feel like you have to uh, submit yourself to a, uh, a higher source or being or something like that. And it is a higher source or being if you've lowered yourself. But if it, but my child will never have to lower herself or his self. They are a part of me. We are one. That's the thing. And that's the thing that the powers that be have cleverly used to keep you separate and apart 
from your Godship. So the whole idea of being a God is, oh my goodness, oh she's that's blasphemy. That's blasphemy. It's not blasphemy. It's right there in the Bible with Yeshua being yourself. Your safe said, know ye not that ye are gods? See, the thing about it is, you know, I did a video and it was called um, A Message for New Hebrews. And I, you know, it really makes me sad to look in the comment section because there's so many people that miss the point. They really, really, really don't get it. Um, and that's okay because really everything that's happening in our world is a matter of choice and everything will evolve in due time and wherever you are now you'll eventually get there you will eventually have the understanding um, so it's okay when I see people make comments like um, well she didn't mention Jesus Christ's name it's not about Jesus Christ that's not saying that Jesus Christ should not be honored, revered, worshipped, or this. You, you do it the way you want to do it. I'm not taking that away from you, the Buddha, or anybody else's religion. What I'm saying is, we are parts of God, whether you want to believe that, accept that. But see, it's your choice, because we have choice in everything and that choice is determined by what you believe and if the the powers that be convince you to believe it's impossible it's far-fetched or um well, how can that be or it's diabolical she's a witch or you know then there you have it you know so um it's really really quite simple it's like you train a cat to be a dog. You're God, but they train you to believe you're human. And humans don't have those kind of powers. Humans don't have those kind of abilities. That's only for in movies. But the movies will tell you something that is either about to happen or has already happened. None of it is fake or fiction. It's either already happened or it's going to happen. Trust and believe. All you have to do is just really pay attention. Life is nothing but a school and you have a choice and uh, that's the difference between my life and somebody else's life, the choices that I make. When you come here, you come to learn and you learn by the choices. Now when you go to school, you don't um, you don't say, okay, a second grader is better morally than a fifth grader. They just learn more. They're in another class. Okay? So if you go back thousands of years and you know, let's go back a thousand years in time. Let's go back in our Coupe de Ville. And they'll look at that Coupe de Ville and say, Oh, they're a god from heaven. You know, they're one of the gods when we know it's an automobile. Okay? So that's how we look at the gods. They are in another uh, place in time, but they are us. So we don't look at ourselves that way. We don't allow ourselves to look at God that way because we are terrified of God. And we have all these intercessors, clergymen, priests, nuns, pastors, and this and that, telling us how to do it, when all we have to do is reconnect. And you can reconnect mentally. You can do it 10 minutes from now when this video is over. You can go there mentally and begin to access the source of all good, of all love. Because love is the only thing that's real. Love can create. That's all we are is creators. We just constantly create, we constantly evolve. A lot of you are not gonna get what I'm saying because you're not ready to and you don't want to, but that's okay, you'll get there. So don't worry about the person next door, your husband or your wife, eventually they'll get there. If you're ahead of them, it's okay. It's just like being in school. Your little brother will catch up with you by the time you're 35 years old, you'll both be on the same page. So 
all the fear and all of these other things that is keeping us back. Um, it's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. This earth, this planet is going to evolve. Whether you're black, you're white, rich or poor, it's going to evolve with or without you. You really, really think as long as this earth has been in existence that um, America and, and these governments, the way they're being run now and the things that are happening now, you really think they're going to be around much longer in the same way that they've been going? I don't think so. And I'm not worried one bit about it. As long as I can connect to source, connect to the source of all good and all love, the only thing that's real. Everything that you see around you is something that you created through your choices. That's, that's just like one person, there are two people in a car accident and one makes it out and the other one doesn't. So does it mean that it's always on a conscious level? No, because we also make choices on an unconscious level. But you can choose right now to go to source and ask for what you need. You might be unhealthy. You might need money. It, you, you, your marriage might be on the rocks. But you can go to source and you can ask for help and you can receive help. And let's just use a small example. Let's say you go to source and, and you meditating and you are concentrating on God and the goodness of God and the beauty of God and the world around you and you are connecting and you are and you're really really feeling a connection and you are saying source I really really as a co-creator I'm gonna co-create a hundred dollars and then let's say the next day you get it the first time the more you practice the easier it becomes Masters are the ones that can just manifest it just like that, okay? Because you can't manifest anything because you don't have the faith. You don't have the faith because you've been lied to. It's like that. It's just that simple. So once you begin to be able to manifest that $100 bills, and, and some people have learned how to do this, but they keep it a secret from you. So now you know how to manifest that $100 bill. You can go and buy your children some shoes. Then you can go to your neighbor and say, I've manifested 500 today so I can help my neighbor. Then you can say, you know what, I could change my neighborhood. You could change the whole world through accessing the source. You could change your life, heal others. There's nothing you can't do when you take your problems to source. You don't need a leader. You don't need someone. Now, if you are vibrating on such a level because everything is energy. If you're vibrating on a low level, yeah, you might need a pastor. You might need this. You might need that. That's not saying you're beneath anyone. It's just saying that that's where you are. Everybody gets there. It doesn't matter. So once again, the fear is not necessary. But this is good news. You know, I wanted to share this because I see so many people that are in fear, you know, in you know, this whole Hebrew thing, we're identifying with the Hebrews because the Hebrews, whether it was whether it was really the past or it was really the future, doesn't really matter. Because some people say it was the past. Some people say, no, it was the future. We've identified with them as a people that were in bondage and felt um, they, they wanted to leave or whatever. We identify with them. So if you believe that the God of Israel is going to save you, then you need to go to your source. And you need to, you need to stay there. You need to stay there as long as you can. You, people do this through meditation and, and prayer and things like this. You stay there. You connect. And when these uh, catastrophes happen and all of these things happen and you know, somebody shot down the street, these things don't affect you. So you don't have to fear. That's how it works. It's simple and it's easy. You don't have to fear because the power that be knows that fear is one of the greatest tools they can use to control people. So don't be misinformed, people. Raise your vibration. Connect 
to source, directly to source. Don't go through someone else. You can do it yourself. Babies do it all the time. They're connected when they come here. We teach them to be dumb. We teach them to be stupid. You know. Um, now, when I say that, don't send me an email saying, my child has got straight A's. It's not. You have to be able to hear what I'm saying with your spiritual eye. Your spiritual eye is right here. That's the reason so many women are emailing me and saying, Oh, my Leah, you know, I, I had a, a Hebrew man and I thought he because he was a Hebrew and baby, you can't just choose a man based on his faith. You know, you have to open that spiritual eye so that you can see him when he's coming around the corner. You can say, mm -hmm, he's the one or he ain't the one because your spiritual eye is open. When people are reading the Bible, they're reading the Bible and they're getting a million different interpretations. And, and this is something I like to say. You can have 10 men in a room and they will all agree on the interpretation of a particular scripture. But when they go home, they can do 10 different things. So do they really, really embody that principle? Or So what I'm trying to say is the spirit the really spiritual man that has a spiritual eye will be able to read a scripture and understand it in, in, in truth. He'll be able to discern the true meaning. You have people that'll get something and get it all wrong all the time because they don't have that spiritual eye. You have to develop the spiritual eye. And that's not to say you're better than anyone but you're probably more practiced, you're probably more developed, you know. So, uh, look, it's like I'm trying to tell my daughter. She's young. Develop your spiritual eye. Open your spiritual eye. Go to source. And the more you practice going there and the longer you stay there, and it fills you with so much joy and peace. And your life will be filled with joy, peace, and abundance. And you'll have good health. You know, you don't, you don't have to be sick. And I'm not, I'm, don't take this video to mean that you should go off your meds and you should do this and you should do that. You know, you, people don't get there overnight. You could if you really believed strongly enough. But most of us don't because we've just been trained not to. So... Raise your vibration so that you can uh, go to the source, the source of all good, uh, the source of all love, the creator, the omnipotent, the one that created us. We are made in his and her image. So we are co-creators because the omnipotent there's nothing that the omnipotent doesn't experience and create is an everlasting evolution. That's all love is, is evolution. You learn even from your mistakes. When a baby is born, you experience both pain, horrible, horrendous pain, and joy, all within a split second of each other. So I hope that you can really get what it is I'm trying to say. If not, don't worry about it. It'll come later. I love you all with a perfect love and um, I hope this video has helped you in some small way. Peace out.